Welcome to Neighborhood Nature. My name is Lisa and I'm a librarian at St. Albert Public Library and my co-host is Hannah who is a U of A student in animal biology. In this week's episode we look at insects, a dramatic battle, and more. We've been seeing a lot of this type of butterfly lately and this type is called a skipper and you can recognize them by their kind of untidy looking wings. They don't really fold them up nicely like other butterflies do. And you can see they're also a little bit short for the body. You can find these butterflies in patches of clover or in other wildflowers. Here we have a beautiful fritillary butterfly. And this technically isn't one you'd be likely to see around your house, but if you go camping somewhere, you might see this one. We found this really pretty moth on our garage door, and you can see that the color matches pretty well with the color of our door, and that was likely deliberate. You can often see smaller moths flying up when you walk on your lawn, but larger moths like these are often resting in some sheltered spot during the day. How big is this one? This one is probably about an inch, I would say. It's definitely a lot bigger than the ones you see on your lawn. If you've ever done any digging in your yard, you may have come across one of these. It is a centipede, and for years we had been finding them and we didn't know what they were and we looked it up. And that's what it is. It's a centipede, and it's called a soil centipede. Yeah, and they eat worms, and we thought they ate tiny worms, but then we found this one, which for some reason had decided to tackle this huge worm longer than its own body. And it's a bit like watching two pythons fight. You can see how it's wrapping its body around the worm, and now it's moving its back end of its body further away, and it's going to try and drag the worm. So this probably takes a lot of strength, considering how small it is. And there goes the worm into its burrow. But is there still hope for the worm? And a few minutes later, the worm escaped. And here it is. And here comes the centipede. But it looks like it's not taking an interest in this worm. I guess it finally figured out it was too big. We thought the worm was really cool, but this really surprised us, and it surprised us because of where it was. It's a water strider, and normally you'd find them in a pond, but instead it was sitting on a row cover in our garden. It was very windy that day, so we expect it probably got blown off course and it had to settle on our garden. In some of our previous episodes, we've talked a lot about bees and wasps and some of their lookalikes, and here is a very good example of one right here. This is actually a fly. But it does a very good job of looking like a wasp. It's even got the tiny waist. And the wings are, are held out at a very aggressive looking angle. But we can tell it's a fly. And we know this because it only has one pair of wings. You can just barely see the second pair of wings at the base of the larger pair. And they're just little tiny white dots. And as we mentioned in a previous episode, these are called halteers. These lookalikes can be very convincing, so if you're not sure, don't touch it. This is the time of year that you can find grasshoppers. One of the easiest ways to find them is by walking in grass and looking down at your feet as you walk, and the grasshoppers will be startled and they'll jump up. You can also find them by listening for them singing. Although, keep in mind that a lot of birds sound like grasshoppers too. As you can see in this video, the grasshopper is making the noise by rubbing its leg against its wing. This is different from how crickets make noise. Crickets don't have to move their legs at all because they can just rub their wings together. Grasshoppers don't always jump to get places. Sometimes they scramble through the, through the grass like this one is doing. And they can fly too. If they're adults, the young ones don't develop their wings until they're older. Believe it or not, this is a ladybug. Most people think of ladybugs as being red with uniform spots, but this is actually a ladybug. It's more of a brownish red with uh, not quite as uniform spots. We think this is a Hudsonian ladybug, and it's one of many different kinds of ladybugs that don't fit the traditional picture of a ladybug. It wouldn't be a Neighborhood Nature episode if we didn't have a bird in it. So here we have a adult teal, and the plant surrounding it is called duckweed. And it's not surprising that's why it's called that, because they absolutely love it. 
Thank you for watching Neighborhood Nature. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next week.